Hey guys, Carl Barnhill from 1230 Media here. I want to give you three quick tips when it comes to your Easter worship experiences. And these tips, I hope, will help you reach more people and allow your Easter experiences to be more dynamic. Okay, so your Sunday worship service or your gathering, your experience, is the hub of for all other activities at your church. It's the, it's the main event. It's, it's the gathering for your entire congregation. So it would make sense that you would want to pour the most time, energy, and money into creating this experience. It's also the event that you should, should spend most of your time planning, especially when it comes to Easter. So your Easter worship gathering is where you're going to invite guests from the community. Um, it's where you're going to teach, preach, and worship the most as a congregation. But when it comes to Easter, this is a great outreach uh, event for your church. You know this. A lot of people uh, come to church on Christmas, Easter, and a couple of major, major holidays. So this is a huge outreach time for you. So uh, here are three uh, tips for your Easter experiences, okay? I'm going to hit these really quickly. Uh, number one is plan ahead. Now, I know that a lot of your planning, if you're in the communication space or the church production space, um, if you're kind of down in the organization a little bit, a lot of the planning has to do with your with your senior leadership or it's on the shoulders of your senior leadership. Um, but there are some things that you can do to uh, to plan ahead. One thing you can do is meet with your senior leadership. Kind of get a sense of what they're up to, what's coming down. If you're not meeting regularly about uh, your sermon series or that sort of thing, you need to be. Uh, but if you don't have meetings on the books with your senior leadership to talk about Easter, you need to get that on the books uh, immediately and start talking about it. So uh, what I talk about when it comes to planning is a lot of people will blame the Holy Spirit and say, well, the Holy Spirit is spontaneous, and I played this song live, or I felt the calling of the Holy Spirit in the moment. Absolutely, that happens. But my encouragement to you is the same Holy Spirit that is involved and on stage or in the moment, spontaneous, on a Sunday morning or an event is the same Holy Spirit that is involved in your planning. So ask the Holy Spirit ahead of time, weeks, months uh, out from your event, from your Easter service or set of services, start talking to the Holy Spirit then. The Holy Spirit, the same Holy Spirit that is with you on stage is the same Holy Spirit that's in your planning process as well. So be sure to meet with your senior leadership, see what's coming, um, and plan ahead as best as you can in your area. So if there's things that you can do with your volunteers, with your team to go and get ahead, go ahead and plan that out. So plan ahead is a big, big uh, a tip for you when it comes to Easter. Uh, you want to make sure that your planning process is months out from Easter. So if you haven't started planning now, uh, go ahead and do that uh, or start planning for next year. My second tip for you is this. Take your audience on a journey. Now, from the moment someone drives into your parking lot until the moment they drive away, they are in your experience, okay? So at 1230 Media, we help churches transform their worship experiences. That's what we're all about. And what we think, what we believe, what we encourage churches um, to do is start your experience in the parking lot. So one example of this that I always use is an At The Movie series. And my, my favorite movie trilogy of all time is Back to the Future. So I use this as an example just so you can kind of wrap your mind around how the experience starts in the parking lot, okay? What if in the parking lot you had access to a DeLorean or a fake hoverboard or you have kids doing skateboard demonstrations in the, in the parking lot right in front of the, of the church? It's going to be very strange at first, people walking in going, what are those kids doing on skateboards? I, I don't understand what's going on. Um, you could have your greeters wear uh, the life jacket uh, that Marty McFly wore in the movie. You could have them have name tags that say, hey, I'm Carl Barnhill from the year 1983, which is the year I was born. 
Okay. And uh, obviously it's, it's curiosity. It's uh, what in the world does that have to do with anything walking in? Uh, and then maybe in your lobby, um, you have different activities. You have activities for the kids that involve arcades or retro things um, in the in the lobby area. Um, maybe you have some cool booths that are take your picture and it's a retro theme photo booth. Um, think retro, think back to the future. Think movies um, from your parking lot all the way through. What if you get inside the room and what's playing is your pre-service music is the soundtrack from Back to the Future. It's songs from Back to the Future. It's Huey Lewis and the News, if you know anything about the Back to the Future uh, movies. That's the pre-service music. You get in, and the countdown is all about Back to the Future trivia um, or movie trivia. Maybe your opening song is an attention-grabbing power of love or something uh, from uh, or back in time, uh, some song from the movie. Um, And then you can go into your worship set and then your trailer uh, or your sermon bumper can be about Back to the Future. And then you go into uh, the sermon uh, and the sermon can be based on Back to the Future. And it's all about how we need to be uh, saved from our past or not let our past define our future, something like that. that. So you're seeing there's this really big theme that I've started with you using this crazy example from the parking lot all the way through to the room. And then you want to carry that experience out of the room and back into the parking lot. Okay. I use the crazy example to tell you or to kind of get your mind rolling about what's possible and how to take your audience on a journey from the parking lot to the parking lot. Okay. Don't just think, in the room, in your auditorium, one sermon bumper is going to tie in your theme. Think big. Think lobby, photo booth. Think the uh, posters in the bathroom. Think everything. Everything has to do with your series or your theme or whatever. So I use Back to the Future as a crazy example. Say you're doing a series on Jonah, and your theme from parking lot to parking lot is water and whales and whatever, okay? You can have a little um, thing, uh, activity for kids in your lobby that has to do, they have to take the, uh, the whale and shoot them across with water down this track, uh, okay? So I'm just throwing out ideas for you um, that uh, will make you think about how to take your theme, your series, whatever you're doing, through the entire experience for someone, okay? So, Take your audience on a journey. There's no time that's better to do this than Easter. People are already expecting something big, something different. So take your audience on a journey. All right, last tip I have for you is this. Think through transitions. Transitions are one of the most underplanned and overlooked pieces of your worship services or your experience. They are key to a great service flow. So your worship experience is going to flow better when you pay attention and you plan out your transitions. Okay? So let me dive in, uh, dive in a little deeper on this. So once you have your service flow or your order of service in place, spend some time over uh, the, the next week, two weeks leading up to Easter Sunday And I want you to meet with all the key players that are on stage or executing your worship experience, okay? So that's obviously your your pastor, your your host or your announcement person, your production crew or the main people from your production crew, your worship team. So uh, get all your key people together, um, and then you're going to meet with them and walk through the order of service, And you're going to talk through how each element of the service goes into the next. So when this song ends, I'm going to pray here while I'm praying. I need the stagehand to come out. I need him to get the uh, move the podium into place. I need you to move this wire to this wire Um, and video. Here's what we're doing. We're going to be setting up camera shots during the prayer. So one person stays on the guy praying. The other two cameras are moving where you they need to be 
all those details need to be walked through. And then um, on the day of, you need to reiterate and reiterate what's happening. Um, another rule of thumb here is people need to know a general idea of the transitions, but you need to look people in the eye and say, okay, uh, stagehand, at this point, this is what you're doing. So remember that, write that down and go over that. Then go to the next person so that each person knows their uh, piece of the puzzle. Okay. All right. So let me review. Plan ahead, take your audience on a journey, and think through transitions. If you do those three things, you will elevate your Easter worship experience. God bless you guys. I wish you a great, great Easter. And man, isn't it great that we can plan and execute Easter worship experiences and celebrate our risen Savior? It's awesome. I love you guys. God bless you.